Morning Devotion with Father C.K. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. I'm sure you are well this day, Friday, the 29th day of April, in the year of our Lord and Savior, 2022. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Catherine of Siena, Virgin and Doctor of the Church. Our Gospel passage is taken from John chapter 6, verses 1 to 15. In John chapter 6, we find Jesus in the northern part of Israel in the Sea of Galilee region. At this point, his popularity is growing immensely. Great crowds are beginning to follow after him, though not everyone is following for the right reasons. Many were amazed because of the miracles they were seeing and the signs which he was performing on those who were sick. They didn't understand who he is. But they are amazed and follow him to see what he will do next. In verse number 4, John tells us that the Passover was at hand and a great multitude was following him. Jesus was just in Jerusalem for the Passover as was a vast multitude of Jews from Galilee region. No doubt they had seen and heard many of the things Jesus did in Jerusalem and were following him to see what he might do there. What follows next is the famous feeding of the 5,000, the only miracle which is found in all four of the Gospels. Actually, there were many more than 5,000 there because the picture tells us that they were not counting the women and children in that number. There is a lot for us to understand in this story because it applies to so many of us personally. Jesus had compassion on this crowd and healed their sick and taught them many things. He ministered to them all day and when it was evening, the disciples came to Jesus and said, Set the crowd away that they may go and find lodging and get something to eat, for we are in a desolate place. They must have had a little committee meeting and decided Jesus needed their advice. Instead of taking their advice, however, Jesus turns to them and tests their faith. You give them something to eat. Jesus said to them, and then he specifically turns to Philip and said, Where are we to buy bread that this may eat? But then we read that he said this to test Philip. Now there is a lot for us to unpack from these verses and apply to our lives. Number one, faith must be tested. One of the principles from scripture we need to understand is that faith must be tested for it to increase in our lives. James chapter 1 verses 2 to 4. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking 
in nothing. But who likes taking tests? Well, there are some other interesting stories of people taking tests, like the police recruits who were asked during an exam, what would you do if you had to arrest your own mother? Or the two basketball players that had to take a test to avoid academic provision. The testing of our faith is about making faith greater. God wants us to trust him more. And so the testing of our faith is not about passing or fading. It is about having an opportunity to learn that we can trust God with our concerns, with our needs, and the trials of our life. On this, the message that is so clear is that do not despise the day of small beginning. This is point number two. One of the themes that came out of these verses is the significance of the insignificant when it's in God's hand. Did you hear that? The significance of the insignificant when it is in God's hands. Philip answers first. His answer gives us the sense that he had the classic admin personality. He must have done some calculations and said, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient. Adrew spoke next. There is a lad here with five barley loaves and two fish. It would have been a good answer if he would have stopped right there. But then he adds, but what are these for so many? And when you have the boy, it's safe to conclude he came from poverty. Barley loaves were extremely low quality that only the poorest would eat. And then two small fish, something like two sausages, if you like. Little did his mother know that when she packed that lunch, it would be used of the Lord in such a significant way. The point is that the boy gave his lunch to Adrew, who then gave it to Jesus. An insignificant boy with an insignificant lunch was used to feed more than 10,000 people. People often have a lack of faith because they see themselves as insignificant, especially in comparison to a mountain of trouble or difficulty. This is one of the hardest lessons for us to learn because we are so discouraged by our own insignificance that we don't lift up our eyes and look upon him who is the answer. But not only does insignificance keep us from trusting God, thinking too much of ourselves is also a lack of faith. If you didn't know, now you know. Point number three, use what he has given you. One of the ways that people despise the day of small beginnings is by getting frustrated because what they have is not enough for them. They are not content that they won't give thanks for what they have, although that was the first thing Jesus did. He gave thanks to God for that small lunch and then broke it in his hands to make it sufficient for someone's need. Notice it didn't immediately become a mountain of bread and a pile of fish. He took what he had and used it and it became more. He just kept giving it and more was provided as it was being given. This is important. You know, many people want the whole thing immediately. They immediately want the top position or great success 
or to win the lottery or immediately master guitar or another talent or go to work on Monday and by Friday they are stinking rich. Does that ha happen? <laughs> no. Quick fix mentality if you ask for the CK. Be thankful, my dear friend, for what you have. Use it for God's glory and he will give you more. Many people don't want to do the homework. They want God to do everything for them and have it done immediately. Notice that the disciples had to carry the bread and fish to these groups. Can you imagine them saying, Lord, why do you have to carry this bread? <laughs> why couldn't you have made baskets appear to each group? So we don't have to carry all of this. Mm -hmm. Many people don't want to do the insignificant things. They don't want to do the dishes or take out the garbage or put away the folding or carry the baskets of bread. Really? In that case, you limit what God will do. If you have read the Bible, you realize something about Naaman. He was a captain of Aramean army, but he was a leper. Uh-huh. Point number four. Tested faith will always grow. Remember the verse we read earlier in James chapter 1, that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Faith is tested. Faith will grow. That is, faith that is tested is Faith that will grow. Jesus is training the disciples. He is strengthening their faith. How? By giving them the principles from God's word. By having them see the wonderful things that God can do. And by giving them opportunities to trust God in their lives. My dear friend, when the multitude had been satisfied, he said to the disciples, Gather up the leftover fragments that nothing may be lost. Exactly twelve baskets were left over. Are there lessons and principles to be applied here? Absolutely, yes. The whole story is about the sufficiency of what God will do when we bring what little we have and use it for his glory. My dear friend, please note, there is nothing little when it is in the hands of God. Nothing. Nothing. What you think is insignificant to God, it is significant. When you are called upon to help a needy case, don't count what is in your pocket. Count what is in the pocket of God. It is always, always limitless. Whatever we have in our pockets is always limited. I love that. Thank you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do have a productive Friday.